Hello guys. So this is my first video that I would like to read for you, the little prince, the little prince, sorry, of Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. Um, I really love that story and I already read it in Vietnamese, in French, and now it's time for me to read it in English. So my uh, English accent is not that good as in French. And sometime in my reading, they could have uh, some um, errors. So um, yeah, I, I hope that you don't mind. And of course, if you remarks anything, you could also comment to me and so I could um, improve my reading. Thanks a lot. And I hope you enjoy read this with me. Oh yes, and I would like to also to say that I made the effort to read it first before I'm reading it to you and searching for the pronunciation of the words that I have some doubts of it. Um, but maybe that it's um, not all perfect. So thank you for your understanding. Let's start together. To Leon Wirt. I ask the indulgence of the children who may read this book for dedicating it to a grown up. I have a serious reason. He's the best friend I have in the world. I have another reason. This grown up understands everything, even books about children. I have a third reason. He lives in France where he is hungry and cold. He needs cheering up. If all these reasons are not enough, I will dedicate the book to the child from whom this grown-up grew. All grown-ups were once children, although few of them remember it. And so I correct my dedication. To Leon Wirt, when he was a little boy. Chapter one. Once, when I was six years old, I saw a magnificent picture in a book called True Stories from Nature about the primeval forest, primeval forest, sorry. It was a picture of a boa constrictor in the act of swallowing an animal. Here is a copy of the drawing. In the book, it said, boa constrictors swallow their prey whole without chewing it. After that, they are not able to move and they sleep through the six months that they need for digestion. I pondered deeply then over the adventures of the jungle and after some work, with a colored pencil, I succeeded in making my first drawing. My drawing number one, it looked something like this. I showed my masterpiece to, grown, to the grown-ups and asked them whether the drawing frightened them. But they answered, frightened? Why should anyone be frightened by a hat? My drawing was not the picture of a hat. It was a picture of a boa constrictor digesting an elephant. But since the grown-ups were not able to understand it, I made another drawing. I drew the inside of a boa constrictor so that the grown-ups could see it clearly. They always need to have things explained. My drawing number two looked like this. The grown-ups response this time was to advise me to lay aside my drawings of boa constrictors, whether from the inside or the outside, and devote myself instead to geography, history, arithmetic, and grammar. That is why, at the age of six, I gave up what might have been a magnificent career as a painter. 
I had been disheartened by the failure of my drawing number one and my drawing number two. Grown-ups never understand anything by themselves, and it is tiresome for children to be always and forever explaining things to them. So then I chose another profession and learned to pilot airplanes. I have flown a little over all parts of the world. And it is true that geography has been very useful to me. At a glance, I can distinguish China from Arizona. If one gets lost in the night, such knowledge is valuable. In the course of this life, I have had a great many encounters with a great many people who have seen concerned with matters of consequences. I have lived a great deal among grown-ups. I have seen them intimately, close at hand, and that hasn't much improved my opinion of them. Whenever I met one of them who seemed to me at all clear-sighted, I tried the experiment of showing him my drawing number one, which I have always kept. I would try to find out, so, if this was a person of true understanding, but whoever it was, he or she would always say, that is a hat. Then I would never talk to that person about boa constrictors or primeval, <laughs> sorry, or primeval forest or stars. I would bring myself down to his level. I would talk to him about bridge and golf and politics and necties. And the grown-up would be greatly pleased to have met such a sensible man. Chapter number two. So I lived my life alone without anyone that I could really talk to until I had an accident with my plane in the desert of Sahara six years ago. Something was broken in my engine. Sorry, was broken in my engine. And as I had with me neither a mechanic nor any passengers, I set myself to attempt the difficult repairs all alone. It was a question of life or death for me. I had scarcely enough drinking water to last a week. The first night then, I went to sleep on the sand, a thousand miles from any human habitation. I was more isolated than a shipwrecked sailor on a raft in the middle of the ocean. Thus, you can imagine my amazement at sunrise when I was awakened by an odd little voice. It said, if you please draw me a ship. What? Draw me a ship? I jumped to my feet, completely thunderstruck. I blinked my eyes hard. I looked carefully all around me and I saw a most extraordinary small person who stood there examining me with great seriousness. Here you may see the best portrait that, later, I was able to make of him, but my drawing is certainly very much less charming than its model. That, however, is not my fault. The grown-ups discouraged me in my painter's career when I was six years old, and I never learned to draw anything except boars from the outside and boars from the inside. Now I stared at this sudden apparition with my eyes fairly starting out of my head in astonishment. Remember, I had crashed in the desert a thousand miles from any inhabited region. And yet, my little man seemed neither to be straying uncertainly among the sands, nor to be fainting from fatigue or hunger or thirst or fear. Nothing about him gave any suggestion of child loss in the middle of the desert, a thousand miles from any human habitation. When at last I was able to speak, I said to him, But what are you doing here? And in answer, he repeated very slowly, as if he was speaking of a matter of great consequence. If you please, draw me a sheep. When the mystery is too overpowering, one dare not disobey. 
absurd as it might seem to me, a thousand miles from any human habitation and in danger of death. I took out of my pocket a sheet of paper and my fountain pen. But then I remembered how my studies had been concentrated on geography, history, arithmetic, and grammar. And I told the little chap, a little crossly too, that I did not know how to draw. He answered me, that doesn't matter, draw me a ship. But I had never drawn a ship. So I drew for him one of the two pictures I had drawn so often. It was that of the boa constrictor from the outside. And I was astounded to hear the little fellow greet it with. No, no, no. I do not want an elephant inside the boa constrictor. A boa constrictor is a very dangerous creature and an elephant is very cumbersome. When I live, everything is very small. What I need is a ship. Draw me a ship. So then I made a drawing. He looked at it carefully. Then he said, no, this ship is already very sickly. Make me another. So I made another drawing. My friend smiled gently and indulgently indulgently. You see yourself, he said, that this is not a ship. This is a ram. It has horns. So then I did my drawing over once more. But it was rejected too, just like the others. This one is too old. I want a ship that will live a long time. But this time my patient was exhausted because I was in a hurry to start taking my engine apart. So I tossed off this drawing and I threw out an explanation with it. This is only his box. The ship you ask for is inside. I was very surprised to see a light break over the face of my young judge. That is exactly the way I wanted it. Do you think that this ship will have to have a great deal of grass? Why? Because where I live, everything is very small. There will surely be enough grass for him, I said. It is a very small ship that I have given you. He bent his head over the drawing. Not so small that, look, he has gone to sleep. And that is how I made the acquaintance of the little prince. That's it. Well, I think that I messed up a little bit with a um, few words, uh, just like primeval, 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 and I generally would um, pronounce it primeval, just like primeval in French, primeval. There's also another one is. Um, I'm doing indirect with you. Digestion in French. Digestion. Digestion. So in French is digestion. In English is digestion. So it's not digestion, it's digestion. There's also another word. I got few difficulties is apparition. Apparition. In French, I would say apparition. And here is apparition. Apparition, apparition. Well, quite similar, right? So digestion, primeval, and apparition. I, I remember the few words more, but um I don't really all, well, not all remember it, but it's fine. Um, I'm gonna get better in the other lecture. Well, thanks a lot for your support, for following me until now. And do not hesitate to look at my channel, YouTube channel, and there's a lot more of videos that you could discover. Um, and yeah, I also read 
the little prince in French and Vietnamese if you want to discover it. Okay, I say you goodbye for this video and a rendezvous. Well, see you on next video. Thanks, bye.